Hello everyone and welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and you're joining me today in the mountains of Vermont where I live with my husband, our two dogs, and Tux, my cat. Um, I thought I'd see if he'd like to take a nap in the background. We'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's very curious about all the stuff that I've brought out for uh, the show today. So. Uh, before I forget, I thought I'd tell you that I'm, uh, I don't always have like a what I'm wearing segment, but today I am wearing something I made. So this is uh, a deer and doe Datura blouse. And yeah, I made this, I think, uh, in 2016 maybe. And I love it. it this has gotten a lot of wear. Um, I've actually made two of these blouses. Uh, I made a kind of summery coral colored one. Maybe I'll insert the photo. Um, and yeah, I, I'm wearing this because I'm trying to remind myself that, um, that I have pieces that I love and I'm trying to get myself to start sewing again. Um, and I think, you know, wearing pieces that I love is going to help remind me to, um, get back into sewing. So, uh, so yeah, this is my Deer and Doe Detura blouse. I used two different fabrics for it. Um, and it's, it's made out of uh, rayon fabrics um, that I actually got locally, so I can't tell you like the brand or anything, and it's been so long, but um, it's really cute, and I won't show you, but it has buttons that go down the back. Um, they're faux buttons. They don't like actually, I don't think it's been so long. I think they're just sewn on. They don't come apart because that would be awkward if the back of my shirt just came apart. But I like it because I can dress it up or dress it down and I can make it look a little bit more professional or a little bit more casual. So yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. Um, so yeah, I, <laughs> I thought I'd tell you um, that I have, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is rather, um, I don't know why I'm like stumbling for words. This is a crafty podcast and I typically talk about knitting, spinning, sewing, uh, crocheting, uh, and now weaving. And I have sort of a teaser in the background right there, if you can see that. Um, so yeah, I have a weaving segment today. <laughs> so I'm super excited. I got a loom for my birthday. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about that in my weaving segment. Of course, I have, uh, I make timestamps uh, in the description bar that you can click on. Uh, depending on what kind of device you're on, but you can click on them to skip to different segments of the video and they'll also kind of give you a heads up about what I talk about. So yeah, I'll just tell you today I have knitting, um, spinning, I have some weaving and sewing that goes with the weaving that I did, um, some crafting from the past, and I'm going to put announcements at the end of the video, which is something I've been meaning to do for a long time and I think I kind of forgot about it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do that now because I know a lot of people skip them anyways. So the people who want to stick around for the announcements, you know, we'll just have them at the end. So, uh, that being said, I have two things I want to say up front. Um, I want to give away and I wanted to give a quick shout out to the podcast. Um, so Taylor Owen has a podcast called The Thread to Mend podcast. It's just Thread to Mend. Uh, her name is Taylor uh, Owen. And she had a giveaway for some fiber. And I'll, I'll go ahead and show you that now. So I'm just uh, putting this at the beginning because I wanted to say thank you and tell you about her podcast. So she's a knitter and a spinner, primarily. I don't know if she does other things. But um, yeah, primarily she talks about knitting and spinning. She actually just finished a sweater. I haven't had a chance to go like pop over and say um, anything yet, but it's a really beautiful sweater. I love your sweater. Um, I forget the name of it, but it's by Jennifer Steinglass. And oh my gosh, I, I bought a bunch of her patterns. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is the fiber that I won. This is Cormo, um, is a Cormo cross. And I got these three bags from her. Um, and the total weighs, uh, over four and a half ounces. So, uh, 129 grams, four and five eighths of an ounce. Um, it's a Cormo Croft. I weighed it. Um, and then I had her tell me all of the information about it. Um, so I could write it on a card, uh, to keep in my spinner's control box, which, um, 
is right here, and I'll talk about it later in spinning. But um, that way I can put oops my sample into my spinner's control box um, with this little index card. So it just says that um, this Cormo is from Peggy Howell, uh, and she bought it at the 2017 Maryland Sheep and Wool. So Taylor bought it at the 2017 Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, I said that I want it from Taylor Owen of the Thread to Men podcast. It's a natural gray with sun bleached tips, dyed with pokeberry. She naturally dyed this. Uh, with pokeberry collected on a bike ride through Herring Run Park in Baltimore City. She lives in Maryland. Um, and then she combed this on her Valkyrie double uh, row extra fine combs. So I just put all of that information on the card. And yeah, I'm super excited. And I want to say... Uh, she spoke about not being sure why she was giving this away, and I have to agree with her. But um, I want to say, because I know how much work she's put into this, and I want to say that um, I'm so thankful that I won <laughs> because I do truly appreciate um, the time and effort that she's put into this. Um, there is a ton, a ton, a ton of effort that goes into processing fleeces, uh, or a, a fleece rather, and I just had to say how amazing it was that she gave this away and that I want it is so um, crazy. It's crazy. Um, I really appreciate this, Taylor. Thank you so much. And I'm going to try to make something really beautiful with it and uh, treat it, uh, treat it well. And I'm thinking about making some sort of beautiful textured shawl. Might be nice. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Any recommendations for shawl patterns? Um, I don't have a ton of fiber, so you know it can't be a huge shawl. It ha it'll have to be something um, a little bit smaller. But yeah, I'm thinking something like, because it, it, it is mostly natural colored. I think to me it looks kind of like a light brown, and then it has these little bits of um, sort of a pinky tone from where she over dyed it. Very pretty. Uh, so I was thinking something um, somewhat simple, but with maybe some texture. So, yeah, that might be, uh, would be very beautiful. And then one other thing I wanted to say was, uh, sorry, I'm putting that over there. <laughs> one other thing I wanted to say was that um, I, so I created the Fiber Arts tag, and um, it has started to take off, and recently, um, one of my tags, uh, the original people that I tagged, uh, took the challenge and made a fiber arts tag video. And that would be uh, Grace O'Neill from uh, Babel's Traveling Yarn uh, podcast. And she's also known as Vanna Willa Mill uh, on Instagram, I think. Um, and yeah, so I wanted to say that uh, I loved watching her. Um, she was so funny to watch, so hilarious and silly, and she mentioned my name like a thousand times. So I was joking. I was like, I don't think anyone's ever going to forget my name. <laughs> Anyways, so go check out Grace's uh, Fiber Arts Tag video and um, see what she's, she's up to and learn a little bit more about her. Um, she had some great things to show off and the uh, her knitting disaster was so funny. That was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we've all been there, Grace. We've all been there. Um, <laughs> so yeah, go give her, uh, go give her, a ch uh, check her out if you haven't already. Um, okay, and I think that's, yeah, that's it. So let's just get into knitting. So for knitting, I have a few things and I have a new cast on. Uh, it's been a little while since I've recorded, so it looks like I've made a ton of progress sun just came out, so I have more light now. <laughs> I'm filming with natural light, so it might come and go. Um, so the first thing I think I'll talk about is my new cast on. Why not? My little mug today. You want to see what it says? Life is a journey. Enjoy every moment. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you my shawl. And uh, I think the last uh, podcast type episode I did... Um, because I had a couple other videos I came out with, but they weren't, they were like specialty videos. So I talked about uh, get buying recently, going to Green Mountain Spinnery for a little birthday trip. Actually, it was my birthday um, that I went. And this is so dark. This is sort of this, uh, it's even darker than my cardigan. Um, 
this very, very deep uh, garnet. Um, <laughs> it really won't. You can kind of see it there. This garnet colored. Oh, there we go. Yes, very beautiful burgundy to garnet colored yarn from uh, Green Mountain Spinnery. And I talked about buying this. Um, I did a shop hop this past summer. And I bought this uh, during the shop hop. This is their gingham colorway. Um, this is the uh, Ancho colorway. I have the little tags here. Ancho and gingham. And I cast on for another Holy Chevron shawl. So it's my second Holy Chevron shawl. And I love my first one so much that I decided to make another one. Um, this is the bag I have it in. I also got this at the shop hop this past summer. So Green Mountain Spinnery is not too far from me. I mean, it's a little bit of a trek, but, you know, pretty much driving anywhere in Vermont is a trek. So <laughs> going anywhere in Vermont is a road trip, um, <laughs> at least where I live. So here's my shawl. <laughs> Let's show you the right side. Um, I've gotten pretty far on it. i got to be careful because my needles are, um, you know, too short to stretch it out. But... Um, I'm loving the way that it's knitting up um, and it's getting to the point where the rows are starting to take forever. Uh, <laughs> um, so my original, so again, this is the Holy Chevron's uh, shawl by Stephen West and I don't know where I put the pattern, um, but <laughs> I'll insert a photo of my first one here. Uh, my first Holy Chevron shawl, which was made out of yarn that I made. And, um, you know, I, I made my own, I spun my own yarn. So that one um, I made right after I got my uh, spinning wheel. And I love it. I wear it all the time. And I was thinking that since I love it so much and I already own the pattern, um, you know, why pay for a new pattern when I already have one that I love? And I wouldn't mind having another one, so I just went ahead and cast this on. So yeah, it's almost it's really like almost like a free pattern, but it's you know I paid for it already. Anyways, you get it. Um, yeah, I don't rarely repeat patterns, but I do really love this one. I love how simple it is, and it's such an easy knit, um, which is something that I'm trying to stay on right now. Is um, easier knits. Because I, I think in the past I had too many projects that needed a lot of attention um, and I was feeling like bogged down and just not wanting to work on things. So I knew that I wanted something pretty mindless and this is just garter with occasional um, yarn overs for the, uh, there's these holy sections because it's the holy chevrons pattern. So yeah, I think I might, might, what I've kind of been planning is, so the striped uh, section, the darker section, the lighter section, striped section, and then a darker section, and then hopefully there are chevrons at the end. So um, I'll have a dark section after this, and then I was thinking after that I would have, I would do stripes again. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I might uh, change my mind, and it might also depend on how much yarn I have once I finish um, this next this row that I'm working on. So yeah, that's my uh, new cast on, <laughs> which seems funny to say because I've been working on it for a little while now. I just waited too long to podcast. Um, so the other thing I have is uh, my socks that are hand spun socks. So yarn that I made, and therefore my um, hand spun box of socks which I'm hosting, and uh, that's that's all year, uh, and um, I will, I'll just talk more about it uh, at the end of the video when I do announcements, so I won't say any more about it now. So these are my socks, and I did make up a little pattern for them, uh, and I am ready to go ahead and start the heels. So I have knit them to uh, I think I do two and a half inches shorter than um, two and a half inches shorter than my total foot length, and I actually like to use this uh, cutout foot from the Fish Lips Kiss pattern, and um, 
I made these little blue markings where I like to stop, which is about two and a half inches. So yeah, I made up a little pattern, if you can see. Just, uh, so it's just really easy. Um, I thought, you know, why not um, do a simple little pattern? So I just made something up. This is um, just two, uh, two pearls. And then um, I think it's four stitches and then a cable, um, a basic cable, four stitches. Can you see it better on there, on that one? And then four stitches and then the two pearls and then four stitches again. So it's so easy to do. Um, really, mem you know, easy to memorize. The back is just plain. And then I was thinking after I finish the heel, I'm going to do the fish lips kiss heel. And someone gifted me, um, you know who you are, thank you uh, so much for the gift. Someone wanted to gift me a pattern, and she gave me Mina Phillips' um, vanilla sock recipe. And I'll show you guys. I have that right here. Um, I was planning on doing this, um, her heel, where she does this extra little gusset piece. But because these are, um, because this, the sock yarn that I made, uh, I did a special, I made a special kind of sock yarn called an opposing three ply. And it adds a ton of stretch and elasticity to the fabric. So I actually think um, that I'm just going to stick with the regular Fish Lips Kiss because this is extra stretchy. And then maybe on the next pair of socks that I make, I will use Mina Phillips' um, little gusset uh, for the heel. So yeah, I'm ready to start the heel. Um, and I thought I'd tell you a little bit about what I do. I actually don't know. I didn't look up how to do uh, two at a time. Uh, heels. I just kind of figured it out. Um, and what I think the first time I did it, I would like I kept like doing one and then moving all the stitches over and then doing the other. But that's terrible. So what I do now is just kind of ignore one sock, work on um, you know this one, finish the heel or get to a certain point. I forget what exactly it is because I just I don't know. When I see it, I know what I'm doing. I don't know. <laughs> and then. And then I will um, go ahead and do the heel for this one. And then once I'm at the, the end of the heel, I will just go right back to do, doing two at a time, like normal two at a time. So, so yeah, I am really enjoying knitting these. It has been a ton of fun. Um, and the, the yarn that I have is kind of striping up. Um, they're not like matchy matchy, but can you see how they're, they have like the same segments of color? So, so like there's this segment here and then there's a segment here and then here. So they're kind of, they're not matchy, but at the same time they, they do sort of have like, um, matching segments. I thought it was cool. So maybe you can see better on the back too. So yeah, that's my hand spun socks. And hopefully once I get the heels done, I will probably fly through these uh, and I'd like to get them done as soon as possible so that um, I can take part in uh, the uh, the box o socks <laughs> knit along which I'm gonna try to do this year and uh, I did put these um, in the chatter thread and uh, Kristen um, uh, the yarn gasm podcast you guys know who I'm talking about um, so I'm gonna try and do that this year and um, I'm, avo I'm avoiding talking about this bag because this is going to be talked about in weaving. <laughs> um, and so I have one other thing to talk about for knitting. And that is, oops, stuff's falling. Um, this is a, a bag that's housing my husband's sweater. And this was, um, this is a little tea bag from Random Fandom Bags. Uh, she has an Etsy store and I want to give away from her. I have a bunch of little goodies in here. Um, including some tapestry needles and I'm trying really hard to get the stray hair off of there. Um, these little snips and stitch markers and things in here. Um, so I did, um, make like this much progress on the sweater. I, what I did was I took the, uh, sleeves off. 
I had them on for two at a time. And so I took them off and this one's just being held on these little circular needles that I'm not using. Um, and then I put this one on for Magic Loop. So uh, now I can go ahead and get these sleeves done because unfortunately I did get stuck on Sleeve Island, <laughs> uh, sadly. So I just wanted to show that and say that I didn't forget about the sweater that I'm making for my husband. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think I probably should just tell him about it because since it's not really necessary to be a secret anymore, I should probably just tell him about it. What are my dogs are barking at? Okay, sorry about that. There's a plow truck that's uh, plowing our, our driveway. Uh, it snowed today. We are supposed to get like three to five inches, and I was actually so excited to see snow this morning because um, it... There's no, people are probably, uh, some other Vermonters are probably really sick of it, but the truth is, is that the cold's not going to go away anytime soon, and I think if it's going to be cold, it might as well be pretty, so I'm still enjoying the snow. I'm not at the, I think like the end of, well, it's February today. At the end of uh, February, um, I'll probably be getting kind of cranky about the cold weather, <laughs> but right now I'm still, I'm still okay with the winter. Um, so, yeah, so on to crochet. So I'm going to do crochet and uh, then just move right into spinning because this is all uh, my hand spun yarn. This is all yarn that I made. And um, since I recorded last time, I have made quite a bit of progress. I'm trying to find the corner with the progress keeper. I can tell you that this thing is already like being loved and used. It's not done yet. I'm definitely going to put um, more rows on it. Where's my, oh, there he is. My little dragon progress keeper. So last time I recorded, I think I was on, so not this blue row, but right below it. So I have put on quite a bit of uh yeah quite a quite a few rows and <clears throat> yeah so uh if you saw my how i apply from a center pool ball this blue blue green stripe is that yarn that i made in that video uh and then um so just some more stripes of some of my other yarns i've talked about in the past this was hippogriff feathers this was a colorway that I dyed from my Etsy shop, uh, Vermont Dye Works, and um, Mando Bug of Mando Bug Crafts has the, she's my yarn twin. Um, and so I have a couple stripes of that. And then this last row, which I, I just love to pieces. You see the, um, uh, it has this sort of rainbow, neon rainbow colors in it. Uh, so I did the uh, this uh, sp spinning box um, unboxing. I really love this sort of like zebra look, and then the zebra with the uh, with the fun colors. Like it's like a neon zebra rainbow going on in the blanket. I love this row so much. Um, I pretty much had to crochet this into the blanket. Um, as soon as possible <laughs> like I didn't wait very long to put this in the blanket um, and I love this so much so yeah that's this is my uh, crochet blanket this is for uh, my crochet along that I'm hosting it's a great granny square cow I have a uh, uh, I always forget to, I always forget something I'll say one thing I forget and then forget another thing um, so I have a Ravelry um, group called Crafty Garden Podcast, and you can go join the group if you like and see what's going on over there and check out my uh, crochet along and my spackle, spin along, knit along. Uh, and then I thought I would show you um, the, the bats that I've carded from my Coriadale fleece. I'm looking down at my show notes so I don't forget things. The sun is really bright right now. Um, so... <laughs> I love this, like, these giant 
fluffy bats. Um, I started carding uh, bats on my drum carter. So I have a Strouch uh, double wide finest drum carter. Excuse me. And um, so far I have made three bats. These guys are huge. They weigh about three ounces each. Um, because this is Coriadale, it's super fluffy. Um, I probably could squeeze four ounces of a different fiber on my drum carter, but um, I don't. I'd rather do this uh, properly and have a little bit less uh, fiber in each bat than try to cram it all in on one go. So this is only one go through the carter. One. Okay. <laughs> this this is pretty amazing. Uh, super smooth. Uh, it helps that I finally uh, I washed my fleece like it feels like a hundred times to get all the lanolin out and um, yeah, boiling wa water is absolutely necessary for me to get this lanolin out. Oh, fun fact! I learned that lanolin is technically a wax. You know, everybody calls it grease. I think it's the plow guy again. Everybody calls it uh, grease, but it's technically a wax. Isn't that interesting? I mean, I think it's interesting. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so yeah, there's my three bats so far, and I have another one on the drum carter. Um, I think uh, four bats will, won't even be a pound. <laughs> So I'm going to have something like maybe 12 or more of these before I'm ready to start spinning for my sweater, I think, something like that. Okay, so along with the, uh, the bats, I thought I'd also show you the little samples that I started making. So this was the very first sample that um, I spun, and this is, uh, I'll try to show you as best as I can, this is the second sample that I spun, and then I um, I actually knit like probably this much more on the swatch, and then ripped it out, uh, and then cut off some of it and dyed it this really uh, kind of Christmassy dark green. I think it looks very Christmassy to me. Um, and started playing around with swatching for um, for a sweater. So I was thinking that I would make this sweater by Jennifer Steinglass. Um, I think you say that arboreal or I'm not sure. Um, it has something to do, the name has something to do with like the foliage or trees or something like that. Um, so I was thinking that I would make this, sorry for the glare. Uh, I was thinking that I would make this pattern uh, it's a DK weight, and the first sample, I hit DK weight perfectly. Um, I got 11 wraps per inch, and um, my gauge swatch, I got the exact gauge that's needed for the pattern, so uh, 20 stitches and 4 inches, and uh, I hit that perfectly. Um, but I decided that this was plied a little, the, the t angle of the twist is too high for this, and that made for a um, probably a, definitely a more durable yarn, but it 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 feels a little bit rougher because of the the high twist. So um, I was thinking that maybe I didn't want it to feel so rough, maybe like a hair softer. You know, although this might uh, this might be more durable and less likely to pill, I was thinking I would like it to feel softer than that. Um, so this one I plied uh, um, on the next, uh, the, like a, a ratio down, so that it would ply a little bit, uh, not, not quite as high of a ratio. And then I also like treadled slower. Anyway, so the, the yarn that I got had a much, much, much lower twist, and the fabric is a lot softer. So yeah, I started swatching for this, but I've been torn, and I'm still quite torn about whether I want to make this sweater, just go for this sweater, 
which I do like and I think I would enjoy. Or if I want to keep the yarn natural and maybe knit a cardigan instead. So a cardigan, something like I could wear over a blouse like this or um, a summer dress, um, something like that. So, so yeah, I've been torn about that. The only thing about the cardigan is I haven't found a pattern that I really want to make. I'd like the yarn to be DK or worsted weight. It would be really nice if I could just find the perfect pattern in DK weight because I've already come up with a yarn that I like. Um, and I want it to be a, a cardigan more like this one. So I don't want, I mean a little bit of a V would be okay. I don't mind V-neck cardigans. But I was thinking more of like a classic looking cardigan. Uh, not an open front one, one with buttons. And, um, and yeah, no pockets or anything like that. And maybe just a little bit of lace detail. Um, so some nice, simple lace detail. But I've been scouring Ravelry, and I've seen a couple things that I like, but nothing that I think I have to have that, or make that, rather. So... Um, I'm still pretty torn about it. Part of me thinks that I should just go for this sweater and that there is, uh, I have more of this fleece uh, and I would really love to continue buying fleeces and making more things. So I can always um, make a cardigan later and keep, you know, it naturally dyed later. The other thing that really worries me about keeping it natural is the fact that this is white. It's pretty white. It's, you know, kind of a creamy white, but this is pretty white and um, staining it <laughs> scares me so badly. I don't want to make something and then, you know, like I'd be so afraid to be near pens and markers or food or just, you know, <laughs> I'd be so, I'd be like so scared to wear it because I don't wear white a lot for that reason. I am not the most, um elegant, ladylike, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's not, I don't think anybody's described me that way, um, <laughs> I was always a tomboy, rough and, I don't know where I was going with that, okay, so, yeah, that's it, um, I think maybe I'll make some separate videos about the fleece, we'll see how that goes, I've kind of got a plan for something coming up, so um, hopefully I can get that together for you guys because I know some people are interested in the whole process that I'm doing. So I am uh, sort of planning for some special videos to make some special videos. So that's it for spinning. Oh, I guess I could show you uh, this. I did get the uh, Nest Fiber Club for uh, January. This is called Pacific Rim. It's organic, Polworth, and silk. And I really was in love with these colors. Um, I really don't have much to say that, like, anything about this that I don't like. Uh, except for one thing. And that's that it's uh, Polworth and Silk. It's organic Polworth and Silk. Hiccups, sorry. Um, and we got organic Polworth and Silk in November. So I was just a little bit, I think it was November. Uh, I was just a little bit, uh, not sad, but just, I would have preferred that I got a different fiber because we already got Polworth and Silk, but I think it's because it was a new year, so they like probably reset the fibers that they use, but it was just so recently that we got Polworth and Silk that I was like, oh, because I was kind of hoping for a fun new fiber. So I think I might get uh, uh, February's. And then I think I'm going to cancel. I have, I feel like I've got too much fiber stash right now. Um, <laughs> some of you are thinking there's no such thing as too much fiber stash. But I think it depends on, different people have different opinions on stash. I actually, I kind of would like to get that book everybody's reading right now, A Stash of One's Own. But I think having too much stash makes me feel guilty. And it weighs on my mind too much. So I think that I would like to um, slow down on fiber buying, uh, except, and except for maybe fleeces. 
Um, I have this rule that once I finish my fleece uh, prep for both the thin and the corrido fleece, then I'll be allowed to buy another uh, fleece. <laughs> um, but this is bothering, bothering me that this doesn't look cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think just the, just, I have enough stash right now. I have things that I want to spin and make. And, uh, so I think, yeah, I think maybe I'll get the February Nest Fiber Club and then I am going to cancel, um, my subscription and, and stop getting yarn for a little while or fiber, not yarn. Well, <laughs> actually yarn too. I'm not buying any yarn anytime soon either. Hopefully <laughs> we all know how that goes. Um, so now, uh, that's it for spinning. So we're on to weaving. Um, for weaving, I have uh, my first project that I ever wove, and you've already kind of seen it. And the second project, which was made on the same warp as the first project. And a new project, which is hiding in the corner right there. And I'll try to figure out how to show that on camera. Uh, we'll see. So first, let me go ahead and talk about my, um, my finished uh, bag. So I'll go, let me just take, well, maybe not. Um, okay, so this is the first piece of woven fabric that I made. Uh, this is cotton, I believe, 8-4 uh, carpet warp, which is, it's just what the yarn is called. So it's made for the warp. Um, this was recommended to me by uh, the founder of Webs, uh, was helping me uh, by my loom and she told me about this yarn as a little bit more affordable option than some of the other uh, yarns that they have. So <clears throat> on the inside I have my project, the socks that I talked about earlier, and I have pockets. So that sun is really glaring. Um, I have two somewhat... <laughs> I still haven't stitched the uh, the bag closed. Wasn't going to show you that, but oops, <laughs> I'm I've been guilty of doing that before. Like I was just so excited to put my my project in here that I didn't finish closing up this. It's mine. It's mine. I'm keeping this. You're not using it. Don't judge me. I can not sew up the side seam if I want to. It's my bag. <clears throat> I'll do it. I'll do it eventually. <laughs> okay, so I made two pockets. And then one, like, little bitty pocket, which I was thinking I could put, like, um, a crochet hook or DPNs or something. Or maybe even, um, maybe even, eh, I'd have to be careful about it, but maybe, like, a pin... Uh, with a nice cap or something if I wanted to have a project with notes because um, I like to write on my projects which is why I like printing them out and highlighters <laughs> I have erasable highlighters that by they're the the friction pen ones um, those are awesome erasable highlighters they're so cool I have like all the colors <laughs> um, so yeah two pockets and then the little pocket I put a button on it. On the other side, you can see the buttonhole. There's no pockets on this side. So there's the buttonhole. I use my sewing machine. It has a very nice buttonhole. Um, so uh, the, I have a foot attachment that I can put on my sewing machine. And you can put a button in there. So like, let you know exactly I want to use these buttons for this cardigan. So I take one of my buttons, put it in the, the foot. I think it's a buttonhole foot or something like that and then uh, you close it down on the button so that it makes a buttonhole that's perfect for that size button uh, theoretically <laughs> and uh, I actually uh, I did put this button in my buttonholer it, it actually this is a, a large button but it fit in there and then um, and then I took it out and then made it a little bit smaller because I wanted to make sure that this was going to fit snugly. So yeah, I use my sewing machine. Uh, I have a Janome. I don't know what the number is offhand. It's the pink one. <laughs> um, so I made this little buttonhole. 
and I had some thread. I just happened to have this thread that matched perfectly to this um, kind of, uh, it's like a green, uh, like a greeny mint color. A greeny mint, it's a great description. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, and then I made uh, these boxy corners, which are just uh, really easy to make little boxy corners. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about how you make these if you don't know. Um, they're really easy to do, and I'm sure there's probably a hundred tutorials uh, on YouTube and blogs with photo tutorials on how to make boxy corners. And there's more than uh, one way to make them, too. There's a couple different ways. So... <clears throat> They look really nice, I think. I really think they look so good. I did something I don't normally do, and let's see if I can show you. Actually, I I left the uh, triangle. It's, I, normally I cut them off, but I left it, and then <clears throat> tacked it onto the bag. And I did the same thing for, so this one I tacked to the bottom of the bag, and then for this outside fabric, I also have a triangle that you can't see, but it's there. And I tacked that up to the side, oops, up to the side of the bag. And I thought because I wasn't putting any um, interfacing in the bag, I didn't want to risk uh, putting interfacing and having it make, I don't know, I didn't want it to do funky things to the fabric because this was fabric that I wove. I didn't want to mess it, mess it up with um, interfacing. Or make it too stiff. I wanted to. I wanted it to still be woven fabric. Feel like woven fabric. So, so that that's what I did. I just tacked the triangles um, on the inside, so it's you can't see it. But I was thinking that it might give it a little bit more structure. I think it does. Oh, uh, and this this pink. So this is some um, of my own hand dyed yarn. This was a little bit of mini skein that I dyed when I was first playing around with dyeing. Um, it's kind of like a pink and orange color. This was the header for the this fabric. So this this was attached to the beginning of the of the weave, and then. What I did was surged it off. I have a serger. It's also a Janome. Uh, I surged, uh, well, yeah, I surged it off, which also um, surged, what it did was it surged the uh, the edge of this fabric, which you can't see because it's on the inside of the bag. Um, <clears throat> and then what I did was, I was thinking, like, this is too cute to get rid of. And I was thinking, like, how could I incorporate it into the bag? So what I did was, with the leftover strip that I had, I... Um, I surged around, you know, both sides, the edges, so that it would encase um, this, well, the warp and the weft. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, I made this strap. I sewed it onto the side so that I was thinking what I could do is, you know, I could carry it like this, so I'll button it, and then have my project in there. And it's got just has the buttons it has these nice holes that um, you know my yarn can easily come through and then I can wear it um, like this and if I wanted to um, like walk around and knit at a festival or something like that um, which is not like I do that all the time like <laughs> I did that one time at Rhinebeck this past Rhinebeck um, <laughs> but um, I could do it if I wanted to I guess that's the point yeah, and then I think that's all I have to say about the bag. I'll just show you the pins that I put on there. Um, so I have this. It's it's how it's it's how I roll uh, with a little thread spool, and my uh, one and only enamel pin. It's the only enamel pin I have. I would love to have more enamel pins, but um, besides buying them online, I haven't found any. This is. Uh, I got it Nito, which was a store in Burlington, Vermont, that closed down. I want the sheep. I want the sheep. There's like a little black lamb and a mommy lamb or a sheep, something like that. And they were really cute. I want those. <laughs> and then I love this. It reminds me of 
um, my cat Tux, and it says weirdo. It's got it's got a little bit of a glare, but it says weirdo. I got that out of the library, <laughs> and I like how it's like staring at the other badge. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's cute. Um, and I feel like oh, there we go. And I feel like it just adds a little bit of humor too. So if I was out like knitting in public. And people, you know, sometimes like non-knitting muggles. <laughs> uh, Christy Glass was talking about that on the knitting on the subway thing. Um, anyways, <laughs> you know, would see that and that might, might make them smile. It makes me smile. Because um, <laughs> it's kind of like poking fun at yourself. I love it. I think it's hilarious that I have that on there. Okay, so, um, so the second thing I made for weaving was this um, just long piece and I thought maybe it could be a towel. I didn't measure it or anything and then I thought also maybe it could be a table runner. I haven't finished it yet. Um, so I was thinking I would make like short fringe, like twisted fringe maybe. Um, so yeah, this is the piece. At the beginning I attempted to do waffle weave which I think I did successfully. Um, I didn't have a pickup stick. So I watched this video by Kelly Casanova. She has a bunch of videos on weaving. And she talks about how to do waffle weave with pickup sticks. And I didn't at the time have pickup sticks. But, um, uh, so I used a ruler. <laughs> And, um, it, it was not the proper tool for the job. It wasn't working that great, but I made it work. And, um, anyways, I did recently put an order, um, for a shacked pickup stick. And I think this is 25 or six inches. I think 26, maybe something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, I have the 25 inch loom and I also ordered another, uh, wooden um, shuttle. So stick shuttle. So I have three now. I haven't taken the yarn off from the, the last project of this one, but I have three now so I can use more colors and I can tell you that I have four colors in that project that I just warped on last night. So now I have a stick shuttle so if I want to do things like waffle weave and I don't really know what else because I'm still a beginner but um yeah I can make uh some fun textured stuff so I, if I can show you that a little bit closer uh so yeah I just played around with that and um that white bit is the header and so yeah I just need to finish this I've been putting it off um and I think it, maybe it's a bit like weaving in the ends for knitting finishing the, uh, the weave. Is this going to be the new version of weaving in the ends? Um, so I was thinking this would be a table runner because it's really too long to be a, like a dish towel or a hand towel. And it's a little skinny too. So I was thinking table runner and it does work with my kitchen table. Although <laughs> my kitchen table always has like a bunch of craft stuff going on on it. Rarely is it like set up for, to be cute decorations but sometimes you know people come over <laughs> and I hide all the crafts <laughs> um so yeah I I'm gonna I'm gonna just randomly well let me finish up talking about a couple things I think um so yeah I'll just tell you that I got this book for Christmas I've talked about it in the past and I want to say how helpful this has been for a new weaver and especially one who I'm just like <laughs> talking about myself like that. I am a new weaver uh, and um, I didn't take a class or anything. I'm teaching myself with this book and things online. So this has been great to have and I have been using it to um, help me figure out all the things that I need to do. So um, yeah, I've been really using this book. Um, I think this is great for beginners like me. Okay, I decided that since I'm going to want to try and show you my loom for my new weaving project, I'm going to insert crafting from the past sort of in, into the weaving section. 
So for crafting from the past, I found this uh, hope chest project that I made. I want to say I made it at least two years ago. It might maybe even three years ago. I'll have to look it up. If I find out the date, I'll put it on the screen. No promises. Um, uh, so I made this. Am I holding it the right way? Yes, I am. I made this Peter Rabbit uh, blanket. Uh, this was a panel that I purchased at a quilt shop, um, actually locally, and I bought it quite a while ago. I think it, it sat for a while in my like fabric stash, and then eventually I pulled it out and decided to quilt it. I did some free motion quilting, which which um, <laughs> was a struggle. So on the back, I used this minky fabric, which is this really soft, sort of velvety feeling um, uh, fabric. It's also thick and hard to sew. I mean, not terribly hard to sew, but it adds a level of difficulty. So <clears throat> uh, free motion quilting it was probably a terrible idea. Uh, and I remember pretty vividly that it was a struggle. It's very, very sunny right now. It was a struggle to um, free motion quilt this because of the minky on the back. So yeah, you can kind of see um, the stitching that I did much better on the back. I just did some random free motion quilting, except for the, uh, the like the bunny, so Peter Rabbit. Um, you can see where I actually went around. I didn't want to quilt on top of him, so I went around his shape. So I think I did that for him and the other bunnies. So yeah, I used to like Peter Rabbit and think that would be really cute. Um, but I think my tastes have changed a lot since I made this. Um, I... I still think this is really cute, and I do love it, but I think, like, I've started liking more modern-looking um, pieces, and I've always thought about making um, a triangle quilt. I've seen these, like, uh, quilts made with um, primary sort of colored, and maybe a few other colors, maybe black and white, and a few secondary colors. Um, quilts that are made of uh, triangles, and I really just like the look of them. I think they're really pretty. It's like nev never this bright. Maybe in the summer, it's never this bright <laughs> in here. <laughs> oh, the sun's peeking out today. So yeah, that's my crafting from the past for today, uh, and yeah, this was fun. This just sits in my upstairs uh, in a little bin. I don't have a chest. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't have a chest for my hope chest. I just have like a plastic bin, which is kind of sad. Um, maybe eventually I will get a, uh, like a real wooden chest. Um, my husband has a, uh, a sort of a chest. It's, it has a painted Alvin and the chipmunks with a little drummer, like a little drum in the middle. Cause my husband was a drummer boy. Um, he started playing the drums at a very, very young age and like actually played in bars at a very, very young age. Um, I don't think he could get away with that anymore. <laughs> and uh, so he has an Alvin and the Chipmunks painted on this um, chest and it has like a drum set on there with his name. <laughs> so, okay guys, here's my loom and I'll try to angle it up so that you can see. Uh, this is my new project. This is the 25 inch shaft flip and this like I said I got for my birthday so I thought I'd show you what I have for yarn on this project. Uh, this is a 10 dent heddle and for this project I had or I have two skeins of fiber from Peggy Jane Fibers so <laughs> I can't I can't get any closer this is uh, Peggy Jane Fiber's um, business card, and this was uh, on her skein. 
Um, I've bought in quite a few of her um, her yarns, and she has an Etsy store. It's uh, I think it's just Peggy Jane Fibers. Etsy.com slash shop slash Peggy Jane Fibers. She is a Vermont indie dyer. And yeah, I've bought in quite a few of her things. And my Find Your Fade, or no, excuse me, So Faded sweater uh, that I wore to ride back was made out in, of entirely out of her yarn. So yeah, so I had these two. These were special uh, custom, these were custom dyed for a shop in Shelburne, Vermont called Must Love Yarn. Uh, so Peggy dyed these two colors specifically for Must Love Yarn. That was this past spring, almost a year ago, um, that, she, that they had that, and that was a sort of a one-of-a-kind deal, so you can't get these. Um, I, I mean, maybe she'd do a custom order, I'm not sure, but you can't get these anymore, and I think they were called, like, confetti, like, pink confetti, and I forget what the name of this one was, but... So yeah, those were the two uh, colors that I wanted to use. And then I had some leftover Hedgehog Fibers. So this is Zephyr from Hedgehog Fibers. And this is uh, Spell. Yeah, this is Spell from Hedgehog Fibers. I bought too many skeins for my uh, Find Your Fade. And I only used one of them, so I had the other one to use for something else. It's this um, really pretty purple to violet color, and uh, and then Zephyr is a speckled white, um, and it has pink and black and blue and purple and neon highlighter yellow and just a bunch of different speckled colors. So yeah, I I have them in this uh, metal uh, bowl because. I, I put the, uh, to warp on the thread, you put the yarn on the floor, but I cannot put anything on the floor in this house because I have two dogs. So I put it in the bowl so it can, my yarn can be safely on the floor and not touching the floor. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. And so I have, uh, basically what I have is, um, I've set up to make a plaid, so I'm going to try and make my first plaid. And uh, what do you what do you guys call that? If you don't, if you're not American, you call it tartan. Is that what you call it? I don't. Uh, I'm not sure. I I call it plaid. Uh, so I'll show you. Um, I uh, this is my pattern binder where I keep all my knitting patterns, and I recently put a spinning section and a weaving section in here so that I can write notes and patterns and make graphs and do different things and plan uh, plan out sweaters for spinning and stuff like that. Um, I can keep that in here. So I made a weaving section and in there I have um, sort of just a page where I've written down all of the information relating to this weave. And I made this card before I started uh, started weaving, so you can see it matches the um, the warp that I have on the loom. So I just took this index card and wrapped um, the yarn around with the number of I think it's the ends per inch that I was thinking for each section. So there are ten um, wraps for this pink right here four of the white in the middle, ten of the pink again, um, two of the purple in the middle. The purple is a little hard to see, but it's there. And then it repeats, but with the blue color. So that just repeats over and over. I wanted the blue in the center, so I made the white in the middle of this blue the very center of the piece. And so it just repeats that same pattern. And what I'm going to try to do, I think, is uh, weave the exact same thing. But um, so for the weft, I'll just weave the same thing. So I'll have, I'll have the same pattern going. I'll have maybe the purple and then I'll start a pink round and then, um, then the purple and then the blue section. So it'll stripe the purple and the blues will also stripe. 
So they'll make the plaid, you know, vertically and horizontally. Uh, and this is going to be, hopefully this is going to be a pillow for my couch or wherever, really. I could put it in my chair for spinning. Um, and uh, I've had this decorator's choice pillow from Joann's in my, uh, upstairs in my craft room for, I don't know, a few years. Um, yeah, so I had just a pillow upstairs um, <laughs> ready to be used. And uh, so yeah, I was thinking that might be a fun beginner project. This is still plain weave. Uh, the colors are just making it exciting. So um, there's nothing too difficult going on. Um, warping this took forever. I warped this on last night and we watched, um, what did we watch? We watched um, on Netflix the, uh, oh, Ch no, yeah, Dave Chappelle comedy special, I think, Netflix comedy special, and um, and then we watched the sh a show about castles in Ireland. <laughs> so I was just listening to it while I was warping this on because it took forever because I had to stop and then tie. So I tie the white and then I cut it off and then I, you know, warp on the blue and then I cut it off and then the purple. So it was a lot of stopping and starting and tying and it just like every time I had to tie on at it more time. It's just very time consuming. Okay, so uh, you might be able to see that I have this on a stand. So um, I did purchase a stand, but um, I did not buy this uh, at, uh, at, if you went, went out to buy the stand for this loom, it's $200. So <laughs> I had no intention of buying the stand anytime soon. Maybe, you know, way down the road, I might buy the stand, but, um, I had, yeah, no intention of buying the stand. And then we went to this little, uh, yarn and fiber shop in, uh, Chester, Vermont. Uh, and I was walking by, they had a shaft flip on a stand and they had prices listed for it and my mouth like dropped open and I was kind of like in disbelief at the price for the stand. So the price for the stand was a fraction of the cost of a brand new one. A brand new one is just over $200. So when I saw this for $50, <laughs> I, I was in shock. So that's a quarter of the price. Uh, it was not used. It was brand new in the box, plastic wrapped, everything. It was perfect, brand new condition. The only reason why it was so cheap is because it was five years old. And it was almost exactly five years ago that they bought it because they had a date on the, on the box that it came in. So when I bought it, it was almost exactly five years ago to the date. It was a January something date. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, it was like meant to be. So I decided since it was such a great deal, I would never be able to get a brand new one for that price. So I decided that I might as well take advantage of it. Um, and so I bought it and I'm really glad that I did because now I can take this massive thing off of my kitchen table, which is where I had it um, for my last project. And now I can sit here, I can move this down. I can sit here. I have it backwards so that you can see the front of the loom, but um, I can sit here on my couch or on one of my chairs and I can uh, weave uh, in comfort. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for my weaving project. And, okay, so I almost forgot something I wanted to show you. This is, um, these are some little small, oops, let's be careful, uh, some little small scissors that I have and I actually have a couple of these. Uh, little small scissors. These are ones that I use for sewing and I have it attached to just a little strip of fabric that I've sewn so that I can wear this um, around my neck and just have it hanging and I use this for, look how funny this is with the, I uh, see my hands. Um, I use this for uh, sewing. So I have this around my neck so that when I'm sewing I can snip little bitty threads or um, whatever I need to do, I have the scissors right here at the, at, at the ready. But I was thinking that I might start wearing this for weaving as well because, um, you know, you'll, uh, as I'm weaving different colors, I'll need to snip the thread. 
So I'm thinking I might start wearing this for weaving. And I thought maybe that I might throw that in as a little bitty tip. Um, if you, any of you guys are weavers, um, and you might enjoy that tip. So. Hey guys, so um, last thing is announcements. And then I have a growth mindset quote that I would like to leave you with. So just quickly, um, I want to tell you that I have three things going on. I have a crochet along, a spin along, knit along, and I have a 500 subscriber giveaway, which is probably going to close very soon. And it uh, probably will be announcing the winners on the next episode. So um, yeah, like I said, uh, I have um, a Ravelry group. It's uh, Crafty Garden Podcast. And I'm Crafty Garden Sews on Ravelry, and links to everything should be below. Um, all three of those things have uh, rules and guidelines. So if you're interested in taking part in the year-long Great Granny Square Cal, um, make sure you check out the rules and guidelines at the top of the thread, of the chatter thread, uh, and the FO thread, uh, which I put up recently. And uh, if you are interested in the Spin Along Knit Along, so the Hand Spun Box of Socks, um, that's going all year long. If you're a spinner and a knitter, possibly you could crochet socks too. Um, and you would like to take part in the hand spun box of socks, then, uh, make sure you go check out the top of the chatter thread. Okay. So the last thing I wanted to add before I let you guys go is, um, a little growth mindset quote. And I found one that's really simple. Uh, and, uh, I, I'm not going to make up my own I'm not a very eloquent speaker, if you haven't figured that out. Um, <laughs> so I just found one, and there are a lot of reasons to have a growth mindset um, and kind of keep a positive attitude um, about what you're doing in your life, whether that's your crafty life or your work life or your home life or your family or whatever it is, like all aspects of your life. Um, I think it's great to have a growth mindset. So, uh, so I wanted to leave you with that. And, uh, today I found one that, um, I think is something I could hear right now. I could, I need to hear right now is that, um, that you should strive for progress, not perfection. So I think I just need that reminder that, um, I have made progress. I'm making progress and that uh, it's okay that things aren't perfect. I'm learning and I'm growing and um, I will get better as I continue, uh, as, I, as I practice and uh, grow and, and learn more. Um, sometimes you compare yourself to other people and what they can do and their skill level uh, and, and uh, that's really not fair to do to yourself. For one thing, you know, they might have a lot more experience than you. Um, so, you know, you just need more time to get to that point. But um, it's all, I think it's just uh, not a good thing to do to yourself is to compare yourself to someone else. Um, I think, yeah, comparing yourself to your past. Have I made progress? Have I learned? Have I grown? Um, yeah, so progress, not perfection. That's my uh, growth mindset for you guys. And I'll try to uh, add one of these little quotes uh, at the end of every video, I think. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.